Prime Minister Stuart appeals to credit unions to help entrepreneurs. The opposition hints at more action to come against the government. And in sports, the West Indies women conquer England at the Mecca in the Tri-Nation Series. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. A very good evening to you. I'm Sophie Cambridge with this Sunday, October 27th edition of the CBC Evening News. In our top story tonight, local credit unions are being asked to change their lending policies so as to help entrepreneurs. The plea has come from Prime Minister Frundle Short, who says the most neglected area in fostering business enterprise in Barbados is access to capital for entrepreneurs, many of whom are credit union members. Prime Minister Frandel Stewart voices concerns at the Public Transport Cooperative Credit Union's 35th anniversary dinner and award ceremony. The credit union has a membership of 935 and total assets of over $10 million. It's the 12th largest of the 33 credit unions affiliated to the Barbados Cooperative and Credit Union League Limited. Prime Minister Stewart told those at the ceremony, credit unions can help Barbados move to the stage of economic emancipation where increasingly people use their talents, skills and education to create jobs and wealth, not only as employees, but business owners. The irony is that while the cooperative movement in Barbados has a capital base of over $1.6 billion, potential entrepreneurs complain daily about being snubbed by commercial banks when they apply for startup capital. Let me also remind you that several cooperative credit unions, in particular the Public Transport Cooperative Credit Union, have in their mission statement the promise, and I quote, to encourage investment in micro businesses, unquote. Unfortunately, the preoccupation with consumer goods has resulted in this item in the portfolio of loans becoming a neglected category. The Prime Minister also noted that while it would not be wise for cooperative credit unions to overload their portfolios with high-risk loans, providing capital for investment in new businesses would help transform Barbados into a major entrepreneurial centre by 2020. I note also with considerable interest that your aim has always been and remains reconstruction, growth and development through participation. I therefore want to make an appeal to the Public Transport Cooperative Credit Union Limited and the cooperative movement as a whole to seize this opportunity to make a significant contribution to economic recovery. For reasons made clear earlier, we can no longer assume that traditional jobs will return in the numbers to which we have grown accustomed. Mr. Stewart also congratulated the Public Transport Credit Union for growing its asset base from $8.3 million in 2007-2008 to $10.4 in 2011-2012. Sean Farrell, CBC News. Well, Opposition Leader and Barbados Labour Party Chairman Mia Motley has told party members to ready themselves. Addressing the final day of the BLP's 75th annual conference at the St. George Secondary School, Ms. Motley said last Tuesday's vote of no confidence was just a dry run. Ms. Motley told the packed school hall that given the current state of affairs in Barbados, the island cannot afford another four years under the current administration. Can we afford to wait four years? No. Or do we indicate from now no. that we are not satisfied? Does the country, does Barbados, the country we know and love, does this country have four years? Or is it really the government that has four years and not the country? Well, Ms. Motley also charged that government has been arrogant in its approach to managing the country's affairs. I say that this government, as I leave you, is arrogant, is indifferent. It is incompetent, and it is that incompetence more than the arrogance, more than anything else, 
is what has put us in this dangerous position. This party, the people who stand before me, the people who stand behind us, the names to whom I referred earlier, this great party offers you, the people of Barbados, a record of 75 years of service, experience, competence, energy, and it is truly, truly, my friends, the hope for the future. Well, in the meantime, in an earlier address, former Prime Minister Owen Arthur charged that Barbados has lost its way. He adds that the island deserves better. Barbados is being brought to its knees by men who seek refuge for their ineptitude in a non-existent global recession. A nation that has now lost its place in the world has fallen behind and is in danger of going under. Our nation has been made the victims of a dangerously flawed and false ideology, which says you can build a society without resting that society on a strong economy. Our nation now faces the specter of becoming a society which does not have a viable economy. Well, a number of people received awards for their contribution to the Barbados Labour Party. They included former chairman of the Electoral and Boundaries Commission, Philip Soro. He received the Grantley Adams Award. Barbadian credit unions have an important role in fostering regional integration. It's the view of Minister of Foreign Affairs, Senator Maxine McLean, as she commended the City of Bridgetown Credit Union for achieving membership of 53 thousand and an asset base of 360 million as at March this year. Senator McLean says the COB is part of a regional movement and as at December 31st last year was one of 229 affiliated, affiliated credit unions with a membership of 1.9 million people and controlling assets of 3.98 billion. If we were to include the other 98 non-affiliated credit unions around the region, our membership regionally rises to 2,169,445 persons and total assets of U.S. $4.886 billion. So we have, therefore, a regional movement which has the capacity to influence the economic development of our region. And as we move as credit unions to what I call stage two, we need to focus, brothers and sisters, on the issue of wealth creation. Well, Culture Minister Stephen Lashley says plans for this year's National Independence Lighting Ceremony will not change because of the cancellation of the Rihanna Diamonds concert. The annual National Lighting Ceremony is usually held on the 1st of November, but this year it will be held on November 3rd. Minister Lashley says he's awaiting the new date for the concert, which has been postponed until next year. I believe that um, Barbadians like myself will look forward to the rescheduled date of the Rihanna concert. Rihanna is an outstanding Barbadian artist. Um, she has been able to blaze a trail of international uh, accomplishments. And I believe that um, we should celebrate her work. And I certainly look forward to being at that concert when it is rescheduled. Just over 60 teachers will be engaged in developmental training later this week. Word of this has come from President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Pedro Shepherd. His comments came during a church service held at the Garden Church of God to mark the start of Teachers Week. Mr. Shepherd hopes the teachers will fully utilize the training in their respective environments. It is our intention that these teachers will then go back into their schools into their zones, into the areas, and share whatever they were imparted to them with other colleagues. And again, the discussion is going to be centered around professionalization, professionalism, and standards. Well, NIFCA award-winning poet and dramatist Jennifer Walker believes that the nation newspaper should issue an apology for the photograph it printed on the back page of its Saturday Sun edition yesterday. That image allegedly depicts two minor students engaged in sexual intercourse in a classroom with others present cheering them on. 
Earlier today, Ms. Walker held a peaceful two-hour protest outside the nation in Fontebelle. Traffic slowed as many motorists read the placard and honked their horns in support of the protest, while pedestrians exple expressed displeasure with yesterday's article. Dressed in a black shirt and a black pair of trousers to mourn the death of what she called good journalism in Barbados, she protested holding a placard, a copy of yesterday's edition of the newspaper and the national flag. Ms. Walker described the article as outrageous, noting that it served no other purpose but to degrade the school and its students. She says she's willing to work with the Parent Teacher Association, other interest groups and artists to promote positive messages for Barbados's children. I stand alone now, not um, on behalf of Jennifer Walker, but on the behalf of all the children of Barbados who I hold in high esteem. And I thought that this article yesterday certainly did not do justice to the, the children of Barbados. Um, while children will do silly things, um, we as adults have to understand that we have to nurture them and we have to guide them. Um, and it is our responsibility to teach them, um, not, not only as, as parents, but as uh, teachers, um, principals, um, the, the ordinary Barbadian, and of course the media. And sadly, uh, the media is lacking in terms of um, holding up its responsibility. 